Well, hello everyone. Just when you thought it was all over. My name is Wei El Shudor and I'm doing my project on Airflow and Celery. Doing this for the spring of 2021, Harvard's Advanced Python uh, for Data Science. Or is it no just Advanced Python? Okay, so an intro. I'm a fellow data science student, uh, peripatetic. I'm also North African American. I'm from the largest country in Africa called Algeria. I was born there. Um, though I'm not technically African American, I've changed majors four times. I speak three languages. My favorite quote is I'm always doing what I cannot do yet in order to learn how to do it. Now, back to that um, term peripatetic. It's just a fancy word for a person who travels from place to place. I tend to shuttle from Brazil uh, to Florida and on occasion, um, Massachusetts when I have on campus courses. It's a term, it's, a, it's derived from Greek um, and it's tied to Aristotle. Apparently the story goes that, uh, not story, but the record says uh, Aristotle had a habit of pacing about while lecturing and I happen to be guilty of the same thing. Anyway, enough of that. Let's jump into it. I would like to prevase the agenda by talking about what inspired my project. Uh, during the course, I heard of two orchestration tools get mentioned. The first was brought up briefly during lecture by Dr. Gorlin uh, called Celery, and the second was mentioned in Daria's section where she talked about alternatives to Luigi, um, like Kubeflow and something, some other one, and Airflow. So I decided to spend my project examining both. Um, and now I'd like to share with you what I learned. You will notice that I've styled this and I gave it somewhat of a Scott flavor. Uh, try to, you know, make it fit into his overall lecture theme. Uh, you'll see what I mean. We'll start with the agenda. Uh, so first item, when not to use Luigi, followed by what is a message queue and a task queue, which you'll need to understand in order to better understand what uh, when I start talking about airflow and celery, then I'll talk about the problem of high volume short tasks, which I also believe was briefly mentioned during class. And then uh, the solution to that using celery and conclusion, giving you some takeaway points. So for students like myself that have no ETL orchestration experience, Luigi offers a great entry point. Luigi has a nice, simple model for execution and triggering. It also does not come with scheduler and other bells and whistles that uh, require tinkering. And it comes with some cons too, though. In fact, the Luigi dogs have this to say. The downside is that, the, is that Luigi doesn't give you scalability for free. In practice, this is not a problem until you start running thousands of tasks. When it comes to running a complex string of tasks, Luigi really doesn't have a straightforward option. There is no simple way to set one task to begin uh, after the first has completely finished. Now, you can overlap tasks, which would speed things up, but at, at uh, some point in our class, we had to do that. I think it was with a download uh, task for piece set four. And you probably noticed that it takes some extra effort and some complex code to pull it off. It just doesn't, doesn't feel natural. On the other hand, Airflow makes it easy to add tasks or dependencies with simple parallelization that's enabled automatically by the executor. Also, Airflow is a more complete ETL orchestrator. It comes with a scheduling and monitoring built in. And this is especially useful if you're looking to scale beyond a single pipeline then definitely don't count on Luigi for that. Okay, so now let's talk about some me message queues and task queues. I understand the book language which says Celery is a task queue and RabbitMQ is a message broker or message queue, but it seems a little confusing as a first time Celery user. So uh, I'll try with you what worked for me. Let, let's forget about Celery for a minute and let's talk about RabbitMQ. 
RabbitMQ is a message broker software. It acts like a middleman accepting messages from producers and delivering them to consumers. Producers and consumers are programs such as Python scripts or Spark applications or logging systems and so on. So let's say, for example, we have a producer like a logging system producing different levels of logs such as info, warning, uh, and error. On the other side, there's a bunch of consumers, three in our case, and each one analyzing a specific kind of log. In order to send the right log messages to the right consumer, RabbitMQ allows you to specify bindings, and a binding is a relationship between an exchange and a, what do you call it, and a queue. So in this example, since we have three log levels, we specify three bindings, one for each binded to the corresponding queue, either info, warning, or error. Finally, each consumer is waiting to receive log messages coming from the queue, and that's how you can spread messages between services in a very elegant way. Now, RabbitMQ is a pain in the ass to work with directly, to be honest with you. This is where Celery comes in to save the day. And you can think of, I guess, I guess the best way then to think of Celery is that it's, uh, besides being a, a task queue, it's, is that it's also a queue wrapper framework, which takes away the complexity of having to manage the underlying MAQP architecture that comes with the operating of uh, RabbitMQ directly. In the case of Airflow using Celery Executor, the task will be sent to RabbitMQ in order to spread them among the different workers. Now, we have seen the queue. What about the executor? The Celery Executor runs tasks in workers. This time, a worker is a machine among a cluster of nodes. On each node, a worker is running waiting for tasks to be sent from the scheduler of Airflow into the RabbitMQ. Like the local executor, a bunch of sub-processes will be waiting along with each worker where the task would be executed. That being said, let me show you how it works here. In an, here's an example of an architecture with Airflow and Celery Executor. The scheduler and Air, the Airflow web server are both running in the master node here on the left. The scheduler reads from the, the yeah, reads from the database, the metadata, and to check on the status of each task and decide what's needed to get done in, and in what order. The executor works closely with the scheduler to figure out what resources will actually complete those tasks via worker process or otherwise as they're queued. RabbitMQ, relaying tasks between the executor and the worker is in the middle. The Celery executor, with a pool of independent workers to which it delegates tasks via messages is on the uh, right under the uh, the scheduler and on celery your deployment scheduler adds a message to the task queue and the celery broker rabbit mq in the middle again uh, delivers it to however many workers to execute here's what's badass if a worker node like one of the ones on the left i mean the right ever goes down or goes offline, the uh, Celery Executor can quickly adapt and can reassign the work to another worker on the fly. Uh, and that's, that's just amazing. So now that we have a decent idea of what a task queue is and what a message queue is and the role within the Airflow architecture, uh, let me dive into a very simple example that examines one of the limitations of Airflow. So imagine we have three-step ETL to extract user data from a raw JSON file, process it, and load it into an SQL table. Simple, right? So this ETL should run on a 30-minute basis. This is an example of how the raw data looks like. We have it on the left, and uh, we pretty much want it to look the, the output to be, or to be, for it to be stored into the SQL table on the right. The script we need to implement this is really straightforward. We just need three tasks. First, grab the JSON data, 
and convert it to a CSV and finally store it into an SQL database. And I have that in my Git repo if you're interested in looking at it. Now here's the problem. These are the Gantt charts I pulled from the Airflow web server, which is a monitor monitoring system for the th uh, three different time instances where the ETL had ran. You can barely see it, but the task duration is in green. I'm going to pause here for a, mo a minute and wait to see if you can figure out what the problem is. Okay, the tasks themselves, as you can see, are done in less than one second, but the time between them is taking four to five seconds on average. Let's think about this a little bit. If you have a use case where your tasks are long and complex moving or transforming big data, then a few seconds in between each task is something you can spare. And if that's the case, then Airflow is a great fit for you. But now let's consider a different situation. Say you have an IoT finance or user data coming from thousands of different re uh, sources to your machine and the goal is for your client to have that data as fast as possible so that they can catch failure, tendencies, etc. And I mean as soon as possible. We are talking about under 10 or 30 seconds tops. In a situation when you have to push through an ETL process every time there is data for one of those thousands of uh, sources, we are gonna, we're talking. I mean, we're talking. Uh, we're, we're talking about small amounts of data here. So, not only will you have a lot of concurrent ETL processes, but each one of them is going to have some number of tasks that are run sequentially. In a situation like this, you can't have an ETL process uh, with a five-second break between tasks. Especially if there is a five or ten or more tasks that are running sequentially, the task scripts, scripts should be executed immediately, one after the other. Okay, Apache Airflow, for the, those outlined reasons, is clearly not fit for this use case. So if we remove Airflow's heavy stuff, but leave the underlying task execution and management infrastructure, then what we end up with is pretty much celery. Now, you might say, why not just run the task in a single host? Since they are small and fast, we should just execute the scripts inside the host. That should be sufficient. Uh, using something like a cron for scheduling. Okay, well, that could work. But if we have thousands of data sources, and we want to process them as fast as possible, we can end up in a situation where we got thousands of tasks running concurrently on a single machine, and that machine might not have enough CPU or memory to support the job. Okay, then you might wonder, well, well, why not just take all the tasks that are running sequentially, put them in the same script, that should at least cut down on the number of intervals between tasks. That's actually a fantastic idea, but there are many scenarios where we can do that. For example, when you have a task that you want to run even if the previous task has failed, if all tasks are running in the same script, if a single task fails, then so does the whole script, and we don't want that. And to dodge all these issues with running a massive number of small tasks, we are going to need a fast distributed task management system. That's not going to spend time on resource allocation like Airflow does. Because each ETL task needs very few resources. Celery doesn't worry about that. And that's why it can run tasks immediately one after the other. So, Let's see how Celery works in practice. Celery needs a backend. And what does that mean? It needs a database to store the results. If we want to persist the results, we need to hook back into the database. If you remember the uh, Airflow diagram from earlier, we had the 
master node with the web server, the monitor monitoring, and we had the scheduler and the executor sending sending uh, tasks to RabbitMQ or messages and message messageMQ talking to the workers. Well, the workers got to whip back around with uh, the results. And the only way to do that is through a backend. So you will notice when setting up uh, Airflow, the first thing you do is set up a database, then grant it access privilege to access it. This slide shows you what starting a celery worker looks like. So you'll see here in the blue font, we, the, the transport they're, here, they're talking about uh, the, uh, the message broker, the results, the database, concurrency, uh, it's related to, it could be thread based if we're talking about uh, worker concurrency levels. You could uh, configure that uh, let's see, that's pretty much it. P pretty simple output. Okay, so once we have that running, we can go ahead and give the executor an order. In my case, I sent the JSON to SQL task to RabbitMQ so that the celery workers can read the task orders and run them. Okay, notice also that tasks are executed immediately, virtually one after the other with no delay between them. We're looking at milliseconds between tasks here. That's a big difference compared to the four or five seconds of running them with Airflow. We can also check on the worker state through Flowers UI. Having a good understanding of the differences between the process base and thread base um, executions, which we cover towards the end of class is really important when it comes to working with a system like Airflow, it really came in handy. So you might notice that, for example, you might notice that even if you are running only one worker, the worker log shows multiple worker instances. That's because even though we launched one worker, it is still handling our tasks concurrently using the threads available. This concurrency level can be adjusted in Airflow's config CFG file. Now, one thing to note is how plain and simple Flowers UI monitor is. This is one of the downsides to going pure celery. We don't have Airflow's incredibly useful UI for monitoring, amongst other things. Okay, to wrap things up, whether you choose Apache Airflow on celery or celery alone depends on your use case. For most scenarios, Airflow is by far the most friendly tool, especially when you have big data ETLs or multiple uh, pipelines where tasks take a long time to execute. In these types of scenarios, a couple of seconds between tasks becomes negligible. But if you have a special use case where data is coming at you really fast from multiple sources, you still need distributed computing and you still need incredibly fast latency, then take a look at Celery. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. I thank you for your attendance and I hope you enjoyed my presentation.